What's happening, everybody? Jason Wright and Brady Montambo here for another episode of the podcast. This is episode number 165. So I'm really excited because you got my name right. Like the first couple of episodes we did together, everybody always stumbled over my last name, Montambo. It's like Rambo. It's not hard, but nobody... I said ever... it wrong? Yeah, maybe a little bit. <laughs> what okay. I say? Everybody says Montambo, which I, I did too. Like when I first met him. So literally when I met this man in college, I said in my head, I called him Rambo Montambo just so I could remember how to say his name to you. So it's okay. Um, <laughs> but I feel like he's grown here. So I'm pretty excited about that. Um, yeah. Speaking of growing and flying off into the world, this has nothing to do with intentionally inspirational digital marketing, whatever the rest of that, however that goes. How's it go again? I don't worry about it. It's too long. Not that exciting. <laughs> okay. So I have a son. He is a senior this year. So he's grown and off and going to college in the fall. Um, so I'm mentally prepared for that. My daughter is a sophomore. So uh, I am not mentally prepared for the fact that she just got accepted into the North Carolina School of Science and Mathematics, which is a boarding school in Durham for juniors and seniors in high school. So I am going to be an empty nester in August. Holy like, cow. I am so like, I am this big ball of emotions between I'm so proud of my kids. They're doing amazing things. And oh my goodness, I'm not old enough to be an empty nester. Like, like this is, this is wrong. And then, oh my gosh, I'm an empty nester. Like all of the amazing things I could do. Like, oh my gosh, where are we going to go? We're going to go here. We're going to go there. We're going to, so like, there are so many like thoughts every second, like there's 20 thoughts that just happened in my head of, around this. So, um, yeah. So the best part about her going to, to boarding school at, at in CSSM, are you ready for this? Are I'm ready? ready. Okay. So the number one thing that I'm super crazy excited about their mascot, take a guess what their mascot is. These are science and math geeks. Okay. A chicken. A unicorn. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense, does it? No. But it's also, <laughs> I'm a unicorn mom. Like I mother a unicorn. There you go. Very nice. That's exciting, but no, I hear you. My uh my son's my oldest. He's about to turn 13, which is pretty crazy. My daughter who is 8, so she's still daddy's little girl, but th there's definitely days like all of them basically. That we dream about that empty nest phase. It's like, it's not that we don't love our kids, but we like our space. You know, we've got two kids that are, we got a loud house, you know, they're, I'm their dad. So everybody's got strong personalities and they're loud. We got three dogs that have big personalities. And it's like between the dogs, between the kids, man alive, it drives me nuts. I try to reason. I've got two dogs that are diggers. One's a beagle and one's a, a bigger kind of a bird dog mix. And I try to grab them by the face and reason with them like they're humans and they're just kind of, How's that work for you? Not very well. So <laughs> I've got to put the shock collar on them and try to catch them in the act, but that involves me camping out and watching this certain area of the yard, which never works out in my favor. But man, the amount of digging they can do in a short amount of time is unbelievable. I mean, three feet by three feet in like 20 minutes? Seriously? Like, how do I fix that? The dirt's gone. No, no, no. no. You, need to, you need to utilize that. This is an entrepreneurial moment. It's up How against the foundation utilize? of the house. It's in a horrible spot. How can we utilize it? People that want to start a garden, you can bring your dogs over, let them dig the hole, then half of their work is done. Look at you that. know what? I could put those like dog rain boots on them so they can't access their claws. Can you declaw dogs? Is that a thing or no? I don't do pets. <laughs> I have no clue oh, yeah. about right. anything about that. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. So... People listening probably love our little silly talk, but what do you want to talk about today? So uh, today we are talking about one of the things that you can work on for your business. It's called the five S's of lean. So in lean, tra lean transformation is about identifying your value streams. Like, what are you doing? If you I'm leaning. Listening, I'm leaning. He is, he is really freaking me out. Anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so lean transformation is about identifying the value streams, like all of the activities 
if, if you're creating a product, if you're doing a service from, you know, lead to close of contract, like all of the things that have to happen, what are the value streams? There's three types of value, things that are value add, like if you, if you do click funnels, like actually making the click funnel is a value. Like you have to do that in order to sell the product. Uh, a business ad, or excuse me, a business value would be learning how to do click funnels. Like it, it doesn't actually make you any money, but you have to do that in order to make the money. Non-value would be the time you spent on Facebook because your browser was open and you got bored with your click funnel. So you just flipped over to Facebook and you were, you know, surfing. So you identify your value stream and you identify your values. Um, and so you can take out the things that are not serving you. So the five S's of lean, I'll give them to you now. Sort, stabilize, shine, sustain, and standardize. So let me explain that. It's, it's really simple and there's a ton of YouTube videos on it. So if you don't want to listen to me anymore, you can Google it and it will show you some great videos. But so here, here's the example. Here's how this works. So I work in an office and my supply closet is a terror. Like everybody just throws things in there. I have to go find an envelope and like there's five different envelopes and one's on this shelf and one's on that shelf and one's on that shelf and it's just a hot mess. I'm losing time that I could be dedicating to getting things done by having to sort through all the things. My personal problem is my drawers in my desk. Like I can't ever find anything in there. So the concept of the five S is to sort them. So you take the time, it's worth the time. This is a business value because it's not actually making you the money, but you got to do it in order to make the money. So you take the time to sort everything out. So you put all your paper clips in a pile and you put all your envelopes in a pile and you put all your whatever's in a pile. You sort everything out. And so stabilize is when you put them back in, you put them back in in a way that makes sense. Like you have your pencils next to your ink pens, next to your Sharpies, and you put your regular envelopes next to your manila envelopes next to your you know, certified mail, whatever. So um, you stabilize that. And the key is everything has a place and it always goes in its place and you mark its place. Like whether you are a label maker, like I have a friend, she has a label maker. Oh my gosh, the woman labels everything. But you actually on the shelf, make a label that says envelopes or pens. Or this is the best one. I love this one because I'm a visual learner. So for your envelopes, you take a picture of the front of the box. So you always know what type of envelope you buy. You always know what size it is. And you print that out and you sit it on the shelf so that your envelopes, I'm either freaking him out or he's got problems because he's like sticking his finger in his eye. <laughs> so you sit, you print that out and put it on the shelf so you always know what goes there, the envelopes. And then, so if you're the person, like I have been in the past, that's responsible for making sure that you get more of those, you go in there and you look and you're like, dang, envelope shelf is missing. And I know that because I know exactly what goes there. Yes, sir. How would this equate for somebody that works in a completely remote digital space? Like, how does this transfer over to that world? It's a good question. Because I know somebody listening is thinking that right now. So even if you work in a digital space, you still have a desk. You still have, you know, the, the tangible things like that. But I, I think there are also, you know, other things that you would do. I like how you put me on the spot. That's a good question. That's so, what we do, Brandy. I know, right? Um, I'm trying to think of something that, oh, oh, I know. Your files in your, like, so my desktop, like my laptop desktop oh, is awful. just full oh, of. God, it's bad. Oh, it's terrible. Like I save things to my desktop and then I save it to my desktop and then it's terrible. So what you could do is if you're like me and you don't like to save things in where they're supposed to go, um, you can have a, a folder that's just to sort. Like these things need to be sorted. I don't have time to do it now, so I'm gonna throw it in my sort folder. When I download it, it goes straight into the sort folder. 
and then I can put them where they go. So, or have four big folders, you know, like classwork or click funnels or home stuff, and then you can sort them. So everything is at a place where it goes. Cause you gotta start small. You gotta start with something you can handle. That's why, that's why the pictures are there if you're working on the shelf, right? Like this is, I can handle this. I know exactly what I'm doing and I know exactly what I'm seeing. So that's the sort and the stabilize. So you get things in a place so that they can be done. The shine is the, the making them pretty, like the, the picture part of it or whatever. Like, so you've cleaned it up, everything has a place and the shine is making sure that it is, it is something that is easily usable. All right, the last two are the tough ones. So the core of making it lean is cleaning that, cleaning that up. The sustaining and the standardizing are the part that everybody has problems with, right? So like we clean it up. Get, when people get stressed or busy, they revert back to what's comfortable, even if what's comfortable sucks, you know? Exactly. That's why the stabilize is the core piece. Like what process can you put in place? Maybe for your files on your desktop, it is a sort for click funnels, like a sort for this client, a sort for this client. And then you can go back through and put them, okay, well, it was for this funnel or it was for an admin thing that we needed to talk about or that was the contract. And then, so organizing them so that you can find them. Another one is email. If we're talking about virtual stuff, like I have an inbox and then I have a client folder for each one. And then within the client folder, I have an admin folder. I have a work folder because I don't know about you. And Gmail is really good about a search feature, yeah. but I can't ever find anything in email. So the better you do at the sort and stabilize and shine, the easier your life is going to be for the sustain and, and standardize. So sustaining is making it practice, like just keep doing it till it's natural for you and it's a habit. And then the standardize is making it across the board. So if your team knows if they put a folder on the server, it's going to go in the file that it's supposed to go to. I'm, I'm helping out a friend clean up their server in this. So it was a client folder. So within one folder of just the client files, they had labeled them one style, which was first initial last name. They had labeled them style number two, first name, last name. They had labeled them style number three, last name, comma, first name. And style number four, last name, comma, first name, account number. So obviously, if I'm looking for right Jason, because I would put it last name, first name, right? Like that's mm -hmm. how most things are labeled. And I couldn't find you because you might have been labeled J Wright. It's terrible. So I spent, that, that's actually my, my job for them is to go through and make all those go right. Um, because you could spend 10 minutes of your time looking for the right folder. And then you've lost, you could, all you need to do is make a phone call about a document. And so you spent more time looking for the document that you needed than actually doing the work. So sort, stabilize, shine, sustain, and standardize. Um, you know, what's funny about the email thing. There was a time and that time is not today, but my wife had, 38,000 emails in like her inbox. Holy freaking cow. Was like you wonder why you get stressed out. Like I think the email <laughs> inbox is kind of a reflection of your mind. Like how can anybody process? You have no idea what's there. It doesn't matter what you say. You have no idea. I try. So I have four business email accounts and one of them gets most of the email and the other three aren't that heavy, but I try to keep the inbox to 50 messages or less. Cause that's one page. So I have G suite looks just like Gmail. And I use folders. So I've got a ton of folders. Folders are labeled well. And I try to delete everything I can unless I'm like, man, I might need to know this in the future. But I'm pretty delete happy. So I don't really have a schedule. But every so often when it gets in that upper 30s or 40s, I just take some time and just start banging through it. Delete, delete, delete. And that's helped me a lot. But when I'm looking at my desktop right now, kind of behind the screen, it's <laughs> it's a mess because I have a Mac and uh, some of it's saved partially to the cloud. Some mm. of it isn't. Some of our other computers in our home are saving to my desktop. I don't even know how that happens, but <laughs> it's chaos. And uh, 
the, the systems like making its own folders, like I think technology is going to take over my house and I'm going to be left locked out of it in the cold. So <laughs> no, but that's really important. And even what you were talking about from a task standpoint, you know, we were like, we were talking before the show, um, you almost probably have to organize your tasks and figure out what actually is helping me. Like if you run a business like me, it's like, what do I, what do I need to be doing and what could somebody else be doing? And um, you know, if, if part of that is, is passing that off to get more organized mm -hmm. and streamlining, I think that kind of plays into it as well. Mm -hmm. You're identifying your value stream. Yep. Um, and I mentioned this to you earlier, you know, make all the ta lists of tasks that, that you do and then categorize them. Is this a $10 an hour task, $50 an hour task, $100 an hour task? Yep. And, you know. I'm going to do that. It's a good exercise. Delegate the things that you can delegate. Yep. And a challenge, like, you know, we talked about for some entrepreneurs is, um, you know, to be able to delegate, it takes money. And there's that, there's that tipping point where you go from being too busy and not having enough money to get people around you. And then you, when you finally can, then it, everything changes. Uh, everything changes overnight. So. And if you're Fun in that stuff. squeeze, if you're in that squeeze zone before you hit the tipping point, things like this, things like 5S, where you're, it doesn't take you 10 minutes to find the file that you want, make all the difference. Absolutely. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yay. <laughs> Very cool. Um, you said something earlier before we started with the show, um, and I was going to bring it up now. The life oh, of me, Lord. I cannot remember. Sweet. Yeah. I never know what you're going to say when you do that to me. <laughs> yeah, I've got one surprise at the end. Not really a surprise, something I'm going to throw in at the end, but uh, no big deal. So, you, But you, you have a webinar coming up, right? So, yeah, I have a webinar um, this Friday. Uh, I think it's called How to Build Your First Click Funnel or How to Build Your First Funnel, something to that effect. I can't remember Wait. off the top of my head. It's uh, 3 p.m. Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern. If you'd like to register, you can go to intentionallyinspirational.com. Registration button is still there. And I'm going to actually, this one's going to be live. I'm going to actually record that because I think it's going to have enough value that people will be able to uh, take advantage of that and enjoy that going forward as well. So, fun so that's. If you're listening to us since six months from now, it was in April. It was April the 5th. Yep. So it'll be an auto webinar somewhere on the website by then, I'm sure. So mm -hmm. fun it's stuff. stuff. It's yeah, really stuff. absolutely. Give me the 30 second elevator speech on it. Uh, well, I'm just going to show you basically uh, what a funnel is from a high level, how it works and how you can get started uh, building one for your own business, whether it's just to generate leads, create more sales, create more engagement, or hopefully all the above. Sweet. You can have your change back, Brandy. I don't need 30 seconds. <laughs> awesome. Well, um, this episode, like last one, was brought to you by FunnelBuildingForProfit.com. If you are interested in learning how to build funnels for other people for money, that's the place to go. www.FunnelBuildingForProfit.com. Brandy, I think that's a wrap for me. I think that's all I've got for this show. Did you, did you tell us the exciting thing? That was the exciting thing. Oh, that was it. Oh, yay. <laughs> I just Making didn't sure. sound excited when I said it, but no. Uh, that's really interesting. You know, I just thought about that recently. I was like, I always try to tell other entrepreneurs how to use what I do to help their business, but I never tell people how to do what I do if they want the extra revenue stream or, you know, digital marketing is a scalding hot industry and it's going to stay that way for a long so time. I still talk to people every day that haven't used email before. Like they'll use it personally, but they've never used it for their business. And I'm like, how does that even happen? What? Because they don't see the value. They'll say, well, I, I was able to reach a million in sales a year without it. So do I really need it? If you want to make more money. So it's really interesting, but um, yeah, if you want to work in digital marketing without knowing marketing, building funnels for people is the way to go. You can become an architect first, I mean, that's, it's, it's an amazing opportunity. And the more you do it, the more you start to understand marketing and everything and all how these different platforms tie together, but you get so much knowledge. It's overwhelming in the fact that people just pound you to do work for them all the time. It's just, it's relentless, which is a good, it's a great problem. Yeah. That's a rough life right there. Yeah, it's a great problem, but you will, you will run into challenges. You're like, okay, I need to make some decisions. What kind of work do I need to start saying no to all the time? So um, check it out if it interests you. As always, we definitely appreciate your eyeballs and your ears, and um, we will catch up to you next week. Great. Thanks for listening. Yep. See you.